Hello everyone and welcome back to the D Hard House. My name is Alicia and this is my video podcast about all the crafty things that I like to do. So if you're a new viewer, welcome. And if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad you could join me again. So today is Monday, May 11th of 2020. And I'm coming to you from my extremely messy craft room today. And yeah, it's been an interesting week. So first of all, let me apologize for not getting you an episode last week. I needed a break. Like, not from you guys. I just needed a break in general. Just, I've been feeling very overloaded with work. <clears throat> I am working from home during this um, COVID-19 quarantine situation. By the way, I should mention I need to find a way to make this a routine as a part of my intro. I am coming to you from Tacoma, Washington in the United States. Um, so we're still under the governor's, our state governor's extended stay at home order. He has extended it now to the end of May. Um, even at the end of May, I'm not sure that I'll even really be like allowed to go back to work. I'm sure I will still be super, super highly encouraged to work from home. But I don't know that for sure. I don't have it in writing yet. Um, but yes, I am working from home. I'm a college math professor and I am teaching from home. And it's a lot more work than I think any of us had anticipated. So I needed a break. So I just took a day and it was my day and I just relaxed and it was glorious. So I'm sorry, it meant I had to sacrifice um, time with all of you, but I feel recharged and rejuvenated and less stressed, which is good. So I'm coming to you now, yay. Um, yeah, so I apologize for skipping a week. Um, I needed a mental vacation. Uh, since I couldn't actually physically go on vacation. And I also apologize for the mess of my craft room. Um, I don't know how much you can see, but um, this door directly behind me is a closet. And in that closet is a bunch of things. And there was one thing in that closet that I needed to find, but I couldn't remember what box it was in. So half the boxes came out and are now like their contents spread across the floor of this room. And I have not yet put those things back. I think you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, yes, that is the state of my craft room. I have stuff all over the place and it's a mess. This is also my home office. So it's been interesting today working in this mess. In fact, I've been working in this mess all this last week, <laughs> so I really need to put that stuff away. Um, anyway, that's the situation. So uh, I will also apologize in advance. I have my window cracked open, uh, so if a loud vehicle drives by uh, and you can hear it, I apologize. I think I know the source of said loud vehicles. Um, while going out on our various walks and runs, there is a neighbor like, what, 10 houses down? It's quite a ways. It's probably like a quarter mile away from our house. Uh, but the when we walk by and when I run by, uh, there are frequently a couple of gentlemen out there working on cars. And these are not like... They do not look like cars that need work. Um, they look very shiny and fancy. And so I, I imagine it is them with the noisy, noisy cars and motorcycles. I also kind of had this a little bit confirmed yesterday when I actually saw them sitting in the driveway revving up the car um, and motorcycle before driving off. Uh, but. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. 
<laughs> my hobby is to sit inside and knit on things. Their hobby is to work on vehicles. Whatever, right? Um, some of us are just louder than others. So, okay, welcome to this episode. And uh, yeah, so I have uh, a big prize announcement to make up here at the top of the episode before I ramble on too much further. So our Dear House Sock Knit Along of 2020 ended on April 30th. And then I was supposed to record an episode last week to announce winners. And I super apologize for those of you who have been like anticip anticipating the announcement. Here it is, okay? So originally, my plan was to draw one winner from Ravelry and one winner from Instagram. However, no one used the hashtag on Instagram except me. And I'm not gonna win my own prize. So instead, I drew two winners from Ravelry. So our two winners are Kat Brown, who is Catherine in Texas. I happen to actually know Catherine. Um, so yay, you are one of my prize winners. And our second winner, whose Ravelry name is LK Cack, who is Lori from Colorado. Yay! Okay, so you two ladies, um, please send me a private message on Ravelry. My username is alidinits2. You can find that written out down below in the description box. Please send me a private message on Ravelry with your first and last name, address, mailing address. Okay, so I know where to mail it to. Um, and say somewhere in the message that you're a prize winner. Yay! That's all you have to do. And then I will take care of the rest. And I will ship your prizes to you. Congratulations. So the D-Hard House Sock Knit Along is a participation-based knit along. So these are folks who did not necessarily finish their socks, but who did um, purchase the pattern and participated. And I really appreciate you uh, for doing that. It's... Um, I just love it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And as a big thank you, I'm sending you prizes. So yay. Okay. <clears throat> what else do I have to talk about? All of the crafting that I've been doing. So I don't know about you guys, but working from home is more time consuming than I thought it would be. And it's just really frustrating to work from home amongst all of this. <laughs> First world problems. Yes. Alrighty. So this is me giving my acknowledgement, acknowledging statement that um, I acknowledge that I am very fortunate to be in a position where I am able to work from home, that I am able to be safe. Um, and still earn my regular income during this global crisis. And I understand that not everyone is in that same situation. I am hoping that this podcast can be a source of joy in this time of need. So that is all I'm going to say about that. Um, so let me talk about my crafting. So I did make some sweater progress. That's right. Uh, this is the dark water pattern by Jennifer Steingass. There we go. And I am knitting this out of Cloudborn Highland Fingering. And the two colors I'm using are Stormy Skies, which is the blue color, and Gray Heather, which is the gray color. Oh, 
And I am almost done with the color work. If I remember correctly, I have about four more rounds left of color work. I'm so excited. And I would have totally finished that color work had it not been 80 degrees these last couple of days. Um, but without an air conditioner in this home, uh, it was just a little too hot and sticky for me to effectively do color work and maintain my gauge. So uh, I was not able to finish that at this point. But uh, we do have some rain and cooler days in the forecast, so I will be able to work on this again without sweaty palms getting in the way. Uh, but yes, I am very happy with my progress. I want to finish the color work and then I want to, because my uh, cable is not large enough to accommodate really all these stitches to be laid out flat and for me to try this on. So after I finish the color work, I want to string in another circular needle so I can spread this out and try it on and see where this falls um, and see how it's fitting. So I haven't I haven't done that yet, and I'm a, I'm a little nervous. Um, I'm a little nervous because I just can't tell how big or small this is. So, um, but I'm very happy with the pattern. I'm very happy with the knit. Um, I love how it's turning out. I mean, it looks like I know how to do color work. It's incredible. I just love it. Anyway. So yes, I have made good progress on this and I'm very excited. <sighs> but it has been just too hot to work on sweaters. So I made lots of progress on a sock. Uh, so May 4th has come and gone. And yes, I watched one Star Wars movie that day. <laughs> just one. It was a work day and I had lots of things to get done. So I had one Star Wars movie on in the background um, when I could. I wanted to watch more, but I just didn't. But in my Star Wars bag is a sock. And this sock has seen lots of progress since two weeks ago. So there we go it has a heel flap and gusset and i'm now in the toe decreases yeah so this yarn is did i forget the ball band again my gosh i did okay hang on <clears throat> Wow, that is crazy. All right, so I just grabbed the second ball. This color is called Dark Water. The same name as that sweater pattern. That's weird. I didn't even notice that. Okay, whatever. This is uh, Premier Yarn Serenity Sock. Um, it's some self-striping yarn of grays and blues. And so, like I said, I'm in the toe decreases now. Sorry. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it's three stripes of different shades of blue. This is uh, part of the heel there, so that's why only one stripe shows up on the front. Um, but yeah, the only, I mean, there's some color mess ups here in the stripes where like the colors bled a little or something. I don't, I don't think it's supposed to be like speckled in there. Uh, I don't know. I think it's fine. It's just not like perfect. So anyway these are a pair of socks i'm knitting for my mom and i will probably give these to her for christmas um 
I gifted her a pair of socks for Mother's Day. So happy belated Mother's Day to all of you mothers out there. Uh, but yes, the um, socks, the actually for our knit along, the blue and white pair that I knit up, I sent those to my mom for, for Mother's Day. And I forgot to weigh them and I forgot to take a picture of them. So I really have my stuff together. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, so I cast on another pair so I can give these to her for Christmas and I'm making good progress and I have my second ball of yarn. So when I'm finished with this first sock, I can start the second one. And then, oh, I finished my hat design and it is very hot. So this hat will not stay on. Uh, but I'll try it on for you. I did finish my hat design, uh, which is going to be for my Give Thanks hat collection this fall. And so it has cables and baubles, and it's just, it. I think it looks really schnazzy. Uh, it is knit out of fingering weight yarn, and I have some of my ends still hanging. Um, I wove in the ends and then I left them for after the blocking to be snipped. I think I'm also going to sew one of my D Hard House labels on here. Oh my gosh, okay. Blocking made a big difference and blocking was also really challenging. <laughs> I don't know how to block hats. Um, I just, I just laid it flat, but then these baubles on the underside, so I kept flipping it, but then because I did five repeats of the pattern, it's not like it like had a clear middle to fold in half. And, um, but anyway, I ended up rigging up my yarn it. <laughs> um, this is one of the yarnets. I, ha I have two of them. Um, actually, I think I bought this as a Mother's Day special like three years ago. But I set this on top of a drinking glass um, and I draped the hat over top so it could get that rounded bit on the top because it was the way I was laying it flat, it was getting kind of pointy and I, I didn't want it to be pointy up here. So that really helped. Um, someone gave a suggestion on Instagram of using a balloon and I didn't have any balloons in the house at the time so I didn't end up using that method but I have balloons on the shopping list so I will try that at some point. Um, but yeah so I think it looks pretty good. I'm very happy with it. I like the color. I think it's very very fall, very pumpkin spice latte kind of thing. Um, and yeah, so it's very comfy. And I'm going to take it off because it's, a, it's warm. I'm looking forward to fall when I can wear hats again. <laughs> it's very flattering, that hat. Uh, but yeah, so I did finish it. It is it's off the needles. It is blocked. Uh, so what I need to do now is actually... Um, write up the pattern before I forget because what I do is I I plan out the pattern and since this was using cables I planned it out with a chart and then as I'm knitting it I modify the chart in places where I see oh that's going to be a problem we need to fix that um, also in the many times I had to rip back and start over I had to modify the chart um, so what I need to do is just get all of that in writing before those thoughts leave my brain, before they leave my sort of short-term memory, uh, and they, those files get dumped. So that's what I need to do. And then I can start on the next one. Yay! So I do have a finished object. I finished my hat. Um, and then I started a new project. Because, yeah, 
I, ne I needed another thing to work on. So on Sunday, uh, yesterday, that was just yesterday, on Mother's Day, um, I decided to take the day off work. I know, right? I have been working every day this quarter. I have, I have only taken two days off now, um, where I've like taken the whole day off, where I'll just kind of check emails to see if they're an emergency or if they can wait until Monday for a reply. Um, which I shouldn't even be doing that. I should just be like fully taking a, a mental and physical day off of work. But anyway, uh, so I decided, you know what? I really do want to start a crochet project, a crochet project I had in mind. Um, and I really, I actually wanted to work on one of the blankets I have in progress, but on Sunday it was 82 degrees Fahrenheit here. And with no air conditioner, it was just too hot to lay an in progress knitted blanket over my lap so I could knit more squares onto it. But I really wanted to work on that kind of project. So I started a new one. So I mentioned <laughs> that I wanted to finish that blanket, that knitted blanket I have in progress. I wanted to finish that before I started the crochet one. Well, I started the crochet one and I didn't finish the knitted one. I mean, we could have seen this coming. This, this was bound to happen. Like I had this thought in my mind and I just, I have to get it out of my mind. So anyway, I cast on a crochet blanket and I should have done this ahead of time, but I'm going to pull up the pattern on Ravelry so that I can share the name with you. Okay, so it's called Hybrid Crochet Quilt by Tracy Fear. Wow, I really need to turn my backlight down, don't I? That would help. Uh, and here is what the cover photo looks like. Yeah, see, I turned my backlight down. That's so much better. So that's what the cover photo looks like on Ravelry. So what it is, this is the picture that got me. Can I, like, cover the glare? I'll just put the picture in here. So I'll skip over here. Okay. So <laughs> this is the picture. I originally saw this on Pinterest. Um, I like to browse on Pinterest at night when I'm kind of winding down to go to sleep and just looking for things that interest me randomly in, in, um, in the fiber arts and gardening, in math tutorial teaching kind of things, uh, whatever. Whatever piques my interest. So that's the picture that drew me in and I was like, oh my gosh, I want to make this. So that's what I'm doing. Um, this is a free Ravelry download on Ravelry, by the way. Uh, and so what you do is you make these um, squares of the, the different squares here, and then you, you sew them together, right? Um, and the, the big squares are made up of the smaller squares. But anyway, there's a whole schematic and it boils down to warm colors and cool colors and sort of grouping them together. So, and it's supposed to come out to be a replica of a quilt pattern, but you're doing it with crochet. So this square I just finished uh, right before sitting down to podcast while I was eating my dinner. After I was eating my dinner and I was finishing my drink. Uh, but, so what you do is you crochet these squares that have two colors uh, and you change the color across the diagonal. And there's the back side. And it's just, it's so clean. I just love how, that's not, that's not the way the color changes. It's so clean, this line. I just love it. I love that crochet is so reversible. It's great. So I'm using double crochets. Uh, 
what is it we have um is it US and UK versions of crochet? Is that is that right? The two versions where like a double crochet in US is a treble crochet in UK? I'm questioning the names. Is it US versus UK or is it like I'm just going to go with that. Correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments. Uh but anyway, so it's very, uh, it's nice. So what you end up doing is um, knitting this in rows instead of rounds. So did I say knit? I need to change my verb. So you crochet. So you crochet, crochet, and then you turn it around, and then you crochet back. So you can pick up the orange again, crochet over here, turn it around, crochet back, so you can switch colors, etc. Uh, so that's pretty clever. But anyway, so they are all like this, but I'm following the pattern on where to place the colors. So it's not a random assortment of colors, although that would be really fun. Um, the, the knitted blanket I need to finish is a random assortment of colors, so I feel like I've kind of already got that. Uh, so with this one, right, so I've started with the warm colors, and this is this is how far I got. <laughs> um, so I've got warm colors patched up here in the middle. And then what will happen is, um, so this, this one will go, actually this will go in a different spot, but you get the idea, right? So it's going to make like an X with the warm colors and then the cool colors are going to pick up from here and then they'll make an X as well. And so, yeah. So the pattern is written to use sport weight yarn. I am using worsted weight yarn. So I think my squares are a bit bigger than intended, but I don't care. <laughs> um, so I'm using worsted weight, acrylic yarn, uh, various brands. I have Red Heart, Karen, uh, Burnett. Um, I think those are the main ones. Yeah, that's all I can think of right now. Red Heart, Karen, Burnett. Oh, Big Twist. Yeah, okay. Anyway, so yeah, that's what I'm doing. And I think it's gonna look so cool. So uh, the last blanket I finished was the Buffalo check blanket. And I was knitting that with mitered squares with a Buffalo check pattern. And that is Michael's blanket. And, and I want this one to be my blanket. Uh, and what do I wanna work on when it's 82 degrees outside? a blanket apparently that's not a sweater but a blanket i'll work on because um, really all i all i have to have in my hands is this little square and two little balls of yarn but anyway uh so i do have to sew these squares together which is not my favorite thing in the world to do which is why i really like knitting the mitered square blanket because you join as you go and you don't have to worry about that. So I will say that is, in my opinion, a downside because I don't like that process, but I am, I am dealing with it and I am choosing to view this as an opportunity to get better at that. <laughs> if I force myself to do it, uh, then it's an opportunity to get better at it. So that's how I am sort of mentally processing that so I can get over myself. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I'm really excited about this. Look at this. I crocheted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I crocheted 12 squares yesterday and sewed them together. And this was... This is pretty much what I did all day. After Mike and I like got up and got ready for the day, 
first we slept in amazing then we like showered ate breakfast got ready and we went for a two mile walk found a free desk picked it up brought it home had video chats with our mothers well i had a video chat with my mom uh he just chatted and uh and we just we picked up panda express through the drive through which put me in a food coma and we just watched TV and I crocheted part of a blanket and it was the best day off ever. Okay, so that's my new project and now I'll get to sew this square on today. So yeah, I think what I'm gonna do is what's suggested in the pattern and that is I'm gonna make this big square that is a repeat and then you just kind of repeat those big squares so what I'll do is I'll make the big squares to then decide how I want to place them because I don't know we'll see how big this repeat ends up being so I can compare it to the size of Michael's blanket and see how many squares wide it needs to be we can talk about that later I started a crochet project. Um, so yeah, I'm using worsted weight yarn and I'm using my size H crochet hook, which is one size smaller than recommended for worsted weight yarn, uh, but is it is my favorite crochet hook. And I pretty much only crochet worsted weight yarn, except doilies, but then I use, you know, the little tiny, like size zero needles hooks <laughs> um anyway but yeah so crochet was my first craft I learned to crochet when I was five my grandmother and mother helped teach me to crochet mom and grandma would crochet a lot um when we went camping together as families uh just going to visit grandma at her house I'd see her basket of crochet and uh, you know I just wanted to be uh, a part of a part of that and so I would nag them until they taught me and they finally did and so this was my first craft um, and I really liked crocheting blankets that's um, a lot of what I would make they're easy squares slash rectangles. Uh, and so it's it's just kind of nice to um, go back to that and experience again and and reminisce. Um, my my grandma Dehart is not with us anymore. Um, she actually passed 15 years ago. Wow, that's that is for real. It was 15 years ago. That is insane. Um, I was a senior in high school. It was a really, uh, really tough to cope with right before graduation. So, um, and I, I still very much miss her. Um, and I, I think about her a lot. So, uh, so yeah, this is just kind of, uh, a memory blanket if you will and I feel like everything I make I I reminisce on um, family members who who aren't with us anymore uh, and family members who are around who I just don't get to see very often so um, for me my crafting is very much a um, a family connection thing the reason I got into it was so I could connect with my family members um, and then when they passed, I inherited their things and it just, it feels like a, a big family connection there to sort of carry on that tradition of crafting. And so for me, it's a very, uh, heartfelt, emotional craft, uh, tied very strongly to my family. But yeah, so that's a little bit more about me than I intended to share, but happy to. So... That, oh, I did some more spinning. Where did I put that yarn? This room is a mess. So I finished another skein of my Coopworth. Here it is. Uh, 
oh my gosh, it just looks so good. So this is all natural um, Coopworth, and uh, I have I purchased this wool from someone, and I purchased it through Facebook. Oh my God, that's the best thing ever. Um, that, oh my God, what would my students think of me if I walked into class on the first day with a skein of wool tied around my head? Would they even think anything of it? This is amazing. Okay. Sorry. It's getting late in the day. I'm getting a little kooky. Uh, but yeah, so this is more of the Coopworth that I've been spinning up. And I think I probably have one or two more skeins worth left to go through. So I purchased this wool. I washed it. I've been combing it, spinning it. And then the plan is to knit a sweater out of it. So... I think I have enough to do one or two more skeins and then I'll be finished with that lot uh, which is exciting for two reasons number one I'll be able to actually pick out a knitting pattern after knowing how many yards I have uh, and and two I can start on a different spinning project <laughs> um, so I've been stopping myself from starting a new spinning project because if I start a new one then I'll never finish this one or it'll just take me that much longer to be able to finish this one. I just need to finish things. So yeah, this um, needs to be, uh, I need to count how many loops I have so I can calculate the yardage. And then this will go on the shelf with the, with the other ones. Uh, but yeah, Michael helped me a little bit with this one because I um, finished spinning this on Saturday and then um, I washed it to set the twist and get the actually it felt so good it didn't it didn't feel greasy it didn't feel like it really needed to be washed but I I soaked it to set the twist and then we went to bed and I was like oh shoot I forgot I left that skein of yarn sitting in that bin of water <sighs> And I said that out loud in bed. So Michael went down and got it out of the bin for me. And I told him, squeeze, don't ring. <laughs> and he did. And he hung it up to dry for me, which was very nice. And dumped out the slightly dirty water. Um, so he kind of helped. Um, but yes, my uh, legs were very, very sore from a workout and I just didn't want to go down those stairs one more time and then up the stairs one more time. So he did it for me, which was very nice. Uh, but yeah, so one more skein is finished. and I think I probably have two more skeins worth to go. So another thing I need to work on. I'm very excited. So, oh, Look, I keep thinking of things. I did get something in the mail. Something that I've been waiting a really long time for to arrive in the mail. But you see, I ordered it right before all of the COVID-19 stay-at-home stuff that was happening here in Washington. And this item came from China. So it got delayed a lot. But it finally arrived. <laughs> so I ordered a paint by numbers painting uh, from paintbynumbers.com. And I thought, you know what? Let's just try it. Like it was a really good deal. And I, I just thought, why not? Right? Not that I need something else to do, obviously. Uh, but I wanted to give it a shot. So I browsed the site and I found something that really, I had looked on the site before and I was like, well, th these would be cool to paint, but do they really go with our decor, right? 
and trying to be conscious and aware of that. So I picked this one that is a moon with trees in front of it and it's going to be very colorful. <laughs> um, yeah, so I will say I did appreciate how it was packaged. So there is a styrofoam cylinder that's rolled up inside of here. This is actually canvas. I thought it was going to be paper, but it's like legit canvas, um, which is really cool. Uh, so I thought I was getting a cheapo cheapo thing, but it's not that cheapo. That's cool. And that came inside this um, bubble wrap package. And in here is the paint. And they included brushes. <gasps> and hanging hardware. Ha! Huh. Okay, so there's paint brushes and hanging hardware. Oh, yes, here's a picture of what it will actually look like when it's done. Which doesn't look that great on the... <laughs> but it's um, it's a moon and it's colorful. Oh, I see. It's not, like, super accurate. Okay. But here's my chart with the numbers. And then all my colors. I'm just excited. I've, I've, I have not done paint by numbers since I was a child. Um, the left side number is the color box number. The right side number is a number that's on the canvas. Please follow the instructions. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact the customer services. Yeah. And then it also says the same thing in what I'm assuming is Chinese because this came from China. But I actually can't tell the difference between any of the symbol languages because I don't know them and I am not talented in that way. Oh yes, my battery is running low. Okay, which means I have to wrap this up. So yeah, I got my paint by number canvas, yay. So um, I am running out of time to talk to you. So I need to cut this short, but I do just wanna mention that <clears throat> most of these state parks have opened back up in Washington. So we will be reinstating our state parks segment soon fingers crossed next week's episode we'll have that um, because we are planning um, to visit one in these next few days so yay if you've been missing that segment <coughs> it is coming back mike and i will be able to get out of the house and adventure around the state of washington and share those things with you so stay tuned so thank you for joining me today i hope you had a wonderful mother's day i hope you have a great rest of your week and that you enjoy your craft whatever it may be i will see you next week take care stay safe bye <laughs>